Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm 14 years old, and I have Lyme disease. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm 20 years old, and I have Lyme disease. The purpose of this film is to see what it's like being a teenager and having Lyme disease. I'm making this film to help people realize how serious this disease is. So now I'm just in bed all day and it's different because I can't be active and my friends and I all just hang out in my room and watch movies and stuff and it gets boring. Um, some history is I did soccer for about eight years and then the last like four years my knees really started to hurt so finally I couldn't play soccer. A couple weeks after I quit I had to go on to crutches because my knees just hurt so bad and then after I was on crutches for two weeks I went into a wheelchair because the crutches weren't helping my legs. I was in a wheelchair for three and a half years and bedridden for most of that time. I am now happy to say that I have been walking for almost four years and I am mostly pain free. And then the wheelchair led to me being hospitalized in a children's hospital for five weeks. The so-called experts at the children's hospital told me and my family that I was not in pain, that I was making it all up for attention, and apparently I wanted to be out of school. And above all, I did not have Lyme disease. I just was getting worse and worse and worse. So finally, my parents took it into their own hands. Luckily, my parents did not take the hospital's opinion as the final word. They kept looking for answers. Some doctors that we went to were pain specialists, rheumatologists, acupuncturists, and then finally we got an appointment with a Lyme disease doctor um, and he told us I had Lyme disease. Going to a Lyme literate doctor was the first step in getting well. Normally if you go to the doctor and they tell you you have a disease, it's not a good thing. But my family and I were overjoyed because it meant there was a reason for everything that was happening. Well, before I got Lyme disease, I didn't really care about doctor's appointments. They were just something that everybody did. But um, after I got Lyme disease, I was always very upset when I'd go to doctor's appointments because we'd go in there and even after we knew I had Lyme disease, the doctors would always say that I didn't have Lyme disease and that Lyme disease didn't exist where I live. Many doctors say that Lyme disease did not exist in California, but actually, the ticks that carry Lyme have been found in 56 of our 58 counties, and Lyme has been found in every state in the U.S. I've actually come a lot closer to all of my friends because they're over a lot more just like getting, helping me through like hard times, and they're, they hang out with me a lot in here. My friends were amazing. They would come over every day during the week and they'd come over on weekends and we'd hang out and a lot of my Lyme friends would tell me that their friends would ditch them once they got sick, but that did not happen for me. I, I couldn't have done it without my friends. We play games on the computer. We play video games. And we'll do like stuff with my video camera. We make little movies. But whenever I tell doctors or nurses that, because that I'm in 10 pain, they always laugh and just say, okay, well, like, I'll put you down for a 9, and I'll say, no, but my pain's a 10, and then we'll get in this little thing, and um, they never believe me when I say my pain's a 10. I despise the pain scale. When they make you rate your pain from 1 to 10, they never believed it was a 10, so why ask? I have not gone to school for two and a half months, and I'm not being homeschooled or anything, because it's just too hard for me to cope with doing school right now. I was out of school completely for eighth grade and for ninth grade I just took one class and for the next three years I did independent study um, where I earned my high school diploma. I am stuck in my bed all day and the only times I get out of the bed um, besides going to the bathroom are to go to doctor's appointments and when I do I go in my wheelchair because I can't stand at all. I remember once when I was in the worst of it, I was going to a doctor's appointment and I wheeled past the kitchen and I looked back and I just remember realizing that I had not seen my own kitchen or living room for over a month. I wish that they would like at least consider the idea of having me or someone else with Lyme disease because you go in and 
you say, like, you'd say, okay, can we do a Lyme disease test? And they go, oh, you don't have Lyme disease. That's what they did for me at the very beginning, like a year ago. My mom asked if I could get a Lyme disease test, and my doctor said he was positive I didn't have it, so I didn't even have to do the test. And they just push away the idea of having Lyme disease when really so many people out there have Lyme disease. The reasons doctors deny Lyme disease is complicated, but to make it simple, it's about money and medical politics. And unfortunately, the patients are the ones who suffer because of it. If I tell them I'm in 10 out of 10 pain, to listen to that and to write it down on their doctor thingy. There are so many people in the world that suffer from this disease. And I know from experience that when you're right there in the middle of it, you can't imagine a brighter future. But what I've learned is you have to have hope. I never thought I would walk again. I never thought I would ever be able to experience a day without pain, but I have. And even though I still have Lyme disease, I'm so much better and my life is more than I ever imagined that it could be. Take things day by day, because that's what I've been trying to do. And they're not the only people out there with Lyme disease. Lots of people have it, um, so they're not alone. And I tell them to just keep trying.